Hey y'all, welcome back for another video. If you're new here, my name is Mark and I typically talk about photography, camera gear, travel, and pretty much whatever else I feel like. Today I'm gonna to be walking you around my ridiculously over the top YouTube setup that has uh, four cameras and records directly into an SSD. So hopefully this video can provide some inspiration to you and your setup, but uh, let's just jump right in and start walking around the desk. So this is actually my photo studio. It's where my clients come for my portrait work. It's where I work during the day, but it's also where I make these YouTube videos. So being able to have a versatile space and a versatile setup is really important to me. And as I started to scale up my YouTube channel and add some more cameras to the mix and do like multi-camera recording situations, the amount of stands between the lighting and tripods and all that stuff just began to completely take over this room. And while there is a lot of space in this room, if I have to do a portrait shoot in the morning and break all that stuff down and put it all away to make this space clean, and then have to pull it all back out again, that whole thing gets like really, really annoying. So what I did was I picked up this standing desk and the whole thing is on wheels and I'm able to just move the desk out of the way if uh, I've got to do a shoot here on the backdrops. So it's really nice to be able to just roll this desk wherever I want to in the room and move it all around. And then because it's also a standing desk, if I want to work from a standing position or make a video from a standing position, I can do that. The heart and soul of my multi-camera setup is this device here called the Atom Mini Pro ISO. There's a few different versions of this device. The ISO version is the top end version and it allows you to record not only your live switched version of whatever your multi-camera output stream is if you're using it for live streaming, but it records each individual input onto an SSD along with that live stream switch. So, when it comes to an editing workflow, for me, one of my biggest issues with an editing workflow, especially in a multi-camera environment, is exporting all of those files and then having to import them, organize them. Like that's a really big buzzkill for at least my workflow. So being able to just immediately unplug this SSD and plug it in over here at my iMac where I edit my videos is like a dream. From the minute that I hit stop on the recording to when I'm editing in Premiere, I mean, that takes a minute, two minutes, maybe, depending on if I already have Premiere open. So just from a ease of workflow perspective, this device is well worth the money for me. In terms of a camera setup, I've got an EOS R here that's actually mounted in a teleprompter that I actually use as a monitor when I'm not using a script. I've got another EOS R over here on a camera slider and I keep the controller right down here on the bottom so I can decide when I want it to move back and forth or just let it run the whole time I'm recording the video. My top down camera is actually a GoPro Hero 4 because that was the camera that I had around that had an HDMI output. I'm using a Deity mic for my shotgun mic but I think I'm gonna upgrade this to something a little bit better. And then camera four is my EOS R5. All these things are hooked in via HDMI, all routed neatly underneath the desk and then directly into the Ada Mini Pro. So I'm actually not recording onto the SD cards on any of these cameras. It's all running HDMI out into the Ada Mini onto the Samsung. So full disclosure, this doesn't come out perfectly every single time. What I've actually noticed is there's a little bit of, there's actually like a little bit of latency in some of the camera shots. So if you've watched like any of my last, I don't know, 15 videos, those moments when you're watching where you almost think that maybe my shutter speed was too low, it's actually a little bit of a glitch in the recording on the Atom Mini Pro ISO. And I hope that they solve that in like a firmware update. It's so inconsistent that sometimes it happens on one camera, sometimes it happens on another, but I can't seem to pin down and troubleshoot exactly why it happens. I've even tried swapping out HDMI cables to different ones or more expensive or higher quality ones, and the issues still persist, even though all of my frame rates are exactly the same, all of my export settings are exactly the same. So, so I can't seem to figure it out and neither can Blackmagic so far. So maybe that'll happen. 
But because this workflow is so easy, I'm okay with it being a little bit rough around the edges because it makes doing unboxings and product reviews and tutorials with multiple cameras, multiple angles, just being able to hit one button and everything's rolling, that is like the dream of I think most YouTubers out there. So I'm okay with that little drop in quality because it just makes things so much easier to edit. For lighting, I've got an Aperture 120D Mark II up here. And the way that I have it mounted on the desk is actually part of a cheap lightweight C-stand drum clamped onto this monitor arm that's also holding this LG monitor. There's a lot of different monitors that you can get and like all kinds of ones for, you know, super amazing picture quality. But what I like about this one, I think the picture quality is fine. Um, but it has a USB-C input so I can connect my iPad or my MacBook directly to it. It also has DisplayPort and two HDMIs. So the way that I run this monitor now is as the multi-stream output for the Ada Mini, but I can easily switch over to a split screen or just completely mirror my iMac because I've got it running with a long DisplayPort cable all the way to this monitor as well. So if I'm editing and I do want to stand up, I can just do that here from this desk rather than having to sit over at the actual iMac itself. This camera is mounted over here with a Manfrotto super clamp and a little pin into a ball head. Sometimes I move this camera to another tripod so I can easily just unscrew this, pull this pin out, and then, well, I can't do that with one hand. So <laughs> let's not try to break the R5 today. My main camera is also mounted using one of these monitor arms and the rest of the monitor arm actually holds the audio and top-down camera up here. This is sort of a weirdly rigged together situation for the teleprompter because I wanted to use a wider aperture wide lens in order to get a little bit of a blurry background. So I had to kind of rearrange the angles at which things go through the uh, teleprompter, but it seemed to work out okay. The slider is held on with another one of those super clamps and a Manfrotto magic arm. This is one of the, like the beefy big ones. Um, I like the ratchet one because it really locks into place as opposed to the, the turny ones that sometimes can come loose. These, once they're locked in, they're like rock solid and they don't go anywhere. And uh, yeah, I've, I, I think that's, I think that's the whole desk. Yeah, so I'll leave links down below in the description to everything that I talked about in this video. And uh, hopefully there's some inspiration here. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this setup and if you think it'll work for you. And by the way, this whole video was filmed on the iPhone 12 Pro Max with the Moment anamorphic lens. So if you've been wondering what that looks like and the uh, audio is coming through the Rode Video Micro. So hopefully this all works out okay for you on that end.